Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can take a stack of singular Jello block images and convert them into a multiplex image for things like total protein normalization or to see the ratio of different protein bands. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can use the built-in create multiplex function in Fretix 1D to turn a stack of singular images into one multi-channel image. Now, the use case for this would be if you had a membrane that you had stripped and then reprobed with another protein, uh, or if you'd taken a membrane that you've already probed for one protein, stripped it, and then used um, a total protein stain to perform normalization further down the line. So to create multiplex images within Fretix 1D, we open up Fretix 1D and before inserting an image, we get these options. You've got the option to open an image, and the option to create a multiplex image. So we want to go ahead and click Create Multiplex, and we'll be presented with this window here. Now you can drag images in uh, from kind of Windows or Mac File Explorer, or you can use the Browse tool here. So I'm just going to grab these two images, and from this window we can determine which image we want in which channel. So the top image will be in channel 1, and the secondary image will be in channel 2 by default, but you can use these arrows uh, to change the order of the images within the multiplex, and you can remove images if you need to go back. So if I come across and click on OK, it will ask me where I want to save my multiplex image. So if I um, wanted to use this multiplex image again, or in a different piece of software, that image remains a fixed image, it's not just limited to the session that you're using in Fretix 1D, and it's not limited to use in just Fretix 1D. It is a now a multiplex image that you have full control over uh, forevermore. So it creates a whole new image. So I'm just going to save this here in my example. Now you can see I've turned one, two images into a multiplex image, and you can see here that I might want to align these a little bit better. So I can see, so if I come down to the channel options here, I get the option to change the position of the channels relative to each other. And I can kind of nudge them along by a certain number of pixels until they're perfectly aligned, and then continue on with my analysis. So once I've once I've done that and I'm happy with the alignment of my images, I can come across and perform my analysis as usual. So I'll just detect some lanes, which I can only do on a single channel at a time. I'll detect some bands. So under the background settings, when using a multi-channel image, you do have the option of selecting different background removal techniques and strengths. Um, the reason for this being if you're using two different antibodies with two different sensitivities, whether it be for protein or if you're using uh, an antibody to probe for protein, then a total protein stain, it's unlikely that those antibodies or that total protein stain will all display bands with the same intensity or have the same level of background or non-specific binding when used experimentally. So for this, you would need to account for that by having different settings or even completely different background removal techniques uh, in use per channel. So we've got that functionality within Fretix 1D. So what you would do is you would define your background removal technique for one and the parameters, come down to channel two, and then change, again, go in and select your parameters and your background removal technique specific for that channel. And we've got a similar mechanism in place for the automatic background, uh, the automatic band detection parameters. So again, we can change the, the sensitivity of the automatic band detection parameters per channel. So we can use just a low intensity on one channel and a high intensity on another channel. And again, this is to be used when you're kind of using different antibodies of different sensitivity. One may produce very intense bands. Uh, for which you would use a low intensity detection preset and one may produce very faint bands for which you'd obviously need to use kind of the high intensity um, preset. So we accommodate that or if you do want to apply kind of a global um, a global preset to all channels you can simply define the parameters for one channel 
come to the secondary channel and copy those parameters straight to the other channel. So you do have that granularity in determining the background removal and the band detection parameters on a per channel basis within our software. So if you were wanting to create multiplex images for the purpose of total protein normalization, um, what you would do is you would come down to the normalization section. Now, if I only had a single channel image, I would only have the option for single band normalization. But because I've now suddenly got a multiplex image, if I had one of my channels as a total protein stain, I could then select total lane volume to use that normalization technique instead. Now, without going too deep into the mathematical functions that are at play here, but we do cover those within our help manual if you did want to dig into how this is determined, um, the software will use the reference channel that you've given it, which would be your total protein stain, and it will work out the total protein volume within an entire lane and compare that to the band that you've got on the other channel to represent and kind of normalize uh, your protein as an express the pre your protein of interest as an expression of total protein within uh, the sample that you've been using. So that is how you would use Fretix 1D to create a multiplex image that you can then use further on, or to do things like total protein normalization or normalize between different channels if you were doing kind of housekeeping protein normalization or if you had two different channels with proteins of interest and you wanted to determine the ratio of expression of protein A versus protein B. As ever, thanks for watching. And if you'd be interested in a free trial of Fretix 1D to use with your own images from your own lab, please check out the links in the description below.